buried in Rivian's detailed financial filings are mentions of the company's plans for global markets. Australia, China, and even India look to be some of them. Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. And thanks for your support over the last few months. There's been a huge number of subscribers jump on recently. And quite a few of you have jumped onto our Patreon account and helped with supporting the channel from a financial standpoint. And I just want to officially recognize those people who have done that. And thank you for that support. It means a lot. Now, if you're wondering who the hell I am, who the hell the Electric Viking is, what do I know? Well, I'll put a video in the description below that tells you a bit about who I am and where I come from. By the way, right now I'm sitting in Melbourne, Australia. It is 1 a.m. and this is my fifth video tonight. Getting a little bit tired, but I love doing this. Now, Rivian may be focusing on the North American market for now, but Australia is in its future plans. Rivian actually mentioned its global plans in a filing with the US Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, in a section labeled long-term growth strategy. Now, one of the things they mentioned in this area is that they plan on getting 15,000 US dollars from all their customers somehow in extra services. So if you buy a Rivian, be prepared to spend an extra $15,000 on I don't know what. Nobody knows what yet, but that is in their plans. Anyway, Rivian said, our launch is focused on the US and Canadian markets. We intend to enter Western European markets in the near term, followed by entry into major Asian Pacific markets. Well, it would make sense if they're going after major Asian Pacific markets, that they would specifically go after, say, the Chinese market, which is massive. Yes, the Chinese do like pickup trucks, believe it or not especially since this pickup truck is more the size of a Ford Ranger. It's just a little bit bigger than a Ford Ranger, Toyota Hilux, that kind of size. Thailand as well. But Australia, where we are one of the world's biggest pickup truck markets, so it makes sense that they would want to come here as well. Plus, we love SUVs. Now, Rivian said, to serve our global demand, we plan to localize production and supply chains in these regions. So I'm wondering if they've got plans for maybe Chinese factories, potentially that would significantly reduce their costs. There's batteries there. There's lots of assemblers there. It makes sense. Now, are their vehicles compliant in other countries? Well, Rivian says it has analyzed the principal laws in the US, European Union, China, Japan, United Kingdom, and Australia relating to its distribution model, finding it will comply with the laws in each jurisdiction. Cautions, however, the laws in this area can be complex, difficult to interpret, and may change over time and thus require ongoing review. And it says it hasn't performed a complete analysis of all jurisdictions which it may sell vehicles. In a section on data privacy legislation, it also mentions large geographies which may become important to our future success, which include Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, and India. Got to expect, I've got to admit, I didn't expect India. But that would be cool. Now, when contacted by car expert, Rivian hasn't confirmed plans for an Australian launch. Instead, reiterating it's focusing on its home market of the United States and Canada first, where they have about 50,000 pre-orders currently. They said in the near term, we are targeting the pickup truck, SUV and commercial van segments in the United States, Canada and Western Europe. Now, I imagine Western Europe is for their van for their Amazon van kind of is known as the Amazon van but it's just an electric van a large electric delivery van we plan to achieve long-term growth by expanding in our existing markets constructing a broad portfolio of vehicles and services with global appeal entering major global automotive markets strategically investing in our ecosystem and expanding into adjacent verticals these filings give us our clearest indication yet that a number of other countries, China, Brazil, and Australia, are in Rivian's future plans, even though a, an introduction date has yet to be specified. 
Now, other elements of Rivian's long-term growth strategy include increasing share in existing markets by offering additional vehicle variants across a wider price range, launching multiple vehicles within the consumer and commercial segments, which will serve a variety of form factors, price points, use cases, and geographies, launching additional subscription services allowing for the purchase of more features via over-the-air software updates. And Rivian also says its expertise in managing what it believes will become the largest centrally managed EV fleet. Its electric delivery van, EDV for Amazon, will help it unlock new business models, including autonomous mobility services for people and goods. So clearly, if you don't know, Rivian have been working on their autonomous services. They claim their autonomous service in their vehicles is level three. We shall see very soon. Now, the company has just commenced production of its R1T electric ute with the related R1S SUV entering production in December 2021. Americans, we call pickup trucks utes here for some reason. I don't know why. You guys basically invented them. We should call them pickup trucks. I'm sorry. Now, the brand's S1 prospectus filed with the SEC ahead of the IPO on the NASDAQ reveals losses of US $426 million in 2019. US $1 billion in 2020, and US $1 or $994 million in the first half of 2021. I don't personally consider them losses. I consider them business investments. I find it strange that they have to term them losses. It's like building a factory, you call it a loss. It doesn't make sense to me. We do not expect to be profitable for the foreseeable future as we invest in our business, build capacity, and ramp up operations, Rivian said in its S1. It's worth years to turn a profit. So it's not unusual for startups to burn money and return big losses as they ramp up. However, while this is common in the world, such as Rivian. Now, like I said, Rivian has 49,000 pre-orders for its R1T electric ute, each of which comes with a $1,000 US dollar deposit, which is fully refundable. And they say its factory in Normal, Illinois can currently build up to 150,000 electric vehicles per year. Now, Rivian plans to expand their capacity to 200,000 per year by 2023. So really, in theory, they actually have a lot of excess capacity if they can build 150,000 EVs per year and they have 50,000 pre-orders, then they can obviously potentially expand to countries like China, Australia, and other markets. Thailand, obviously, they like utes there. The United Kingdom like utes there, like pickup trucks. Sorry, Americans. Clearly, they seem to have the potential to do this in, say, 2024. That seems the most likely year when these other markets could receive their vehicles. Now, apparently, though, not all of that capacity will be dedicated to the R1T and the R1S. Rivian has a deal with Amazon to build 100,000 EDVs, the first 10,000 of which will be delivered in 2022. Now, I'm a bit baffled by that. Normally, a production line has a certain capacity. You can't usually build a van, a big van, and then a completely different pickup truck on the same production line. So maybe that's just the production is more to do with their actual battery supply than their actual production lines. Don't know. The company is also rumored to be looking at building a both a second factory in the United States as well as a factory in the UK and confirmed in the filing additional factories are in its plans. I think if they build a factory in the UK, there they would build the pickup truck, the ute, in right-hand drive for the UK, for Australia, maybe for Japan as well. Now, Rivian has beaten its all-electric rivals to production, fortunately for them, giving them a big head start. That includes the Tesla Cybertruck, the GMC Hummer EV, and the Ford F-150 Lightning, and also pickup trucks coming from other competitors, such as Chevrolet with their new electrified pickup truck as well. Now, the Rivian R1T and the R1S are manufactured in a factory that was once owned by Mitsubishi. Two model Rivian range will be powered by a choice of three different battery packs with capacities of 105 kilowatt hours, 135 kilowatt hours, and 180 kilowatt hours. Massive battery pack. The ONT and the ONS will offer up to 505 kilometers and 508 kilometers of range respectively, and up to 600 kilowatt of power from a quad motor or wheel drive powertrain. That means the fastest model will hit 96 kilometers an hour, 0 to 60 miles an hour, in three seconds flat. That's insane. That's supercar fast. In fact, that's faster than some supercars available right now. Now, both the R1T and the R1S 
can wade through water up to one meter deep, while the R1T has a payload of 800 kilos and a 5,000 kilo trailer weight rating. So it appears as though it can tow five ton. That would mean for Australia and for China, that would be the pickup trucks that can tow the most weight for a local vehicle that's being actually sold in right-hand drive in that market, not having to be imported. So that's good news. Now, what will be the price, say, for Australia? Well, I think the price you'd be looking at would be around about between 95,000 Australian dollars up to their top spec model at around about 130,000 to 140,000 Australian dollars. So it is a bit more expensive than the Cybertruck, but it is a very good quality vehicle and I'm sure it will find plenty of homes. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.